So if you saw my uh, presentation I gave at DDD last year, that was where we had the .NET Core, the latest version of .NET, running uh, on Linux inside a JavaScript virtual machine in a browser on Android. <clears throat> so after that uh, event, I was looking at what are we going to do next, so I decided to um, use Minecraft as an application server and run JavaScript inside Minecraft. <clears throat> That's not actually how it happened. What happened was that I wanted my son to learn how to program, so I found out about this project, this program called Coda Dojo, where you go and mentor kids in the libraries, public libraries around town. So I show up there and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to teach the kids here, and they told me there's no lesson plan, there's no curriculum, you just show up and whatever you're enthusiastic about, they'll get your enthusiasm and catch that themselves. So I went along there and what I'd most recently been working on was cracking Wi-Fi networks and penetrating secure networks. So I thought, the parents are probably not going to be wanting me to teach their kids that, so I might just kind of hang back and watch what's happening. So I'm looking at all the kids doing stuff there, they're playing different things, and I think, you know what's missing here is long-running tasks that they can do over multiple weeks and the opportunity for them to collaborate and compete, which is a big part of software development, right? Because software development in reality is a team sport. And it's a bunch of people collaborating together to compete against another bunch of people who are also collaborating together. So I see this book at the back of the room and it says, Minecraft modding with Python made easy. So I think, how hard can that be? There's a book, I just stay one chapter ahead. Get into an argument with a, a nine-year-old kid there about Python versus JavaScript. He tells me, no, nah, JavaScript sucks, Python for life. And I'm like, son, you are too young to be a hater. You're only nine, let's just like, uh, wait till you grow up a bit more, you can go to a, uh, a meetup and, and uh, lay down smack on, on the spec or whatever you do when you become a, a developer. Um, Python versus JavaScript. So JavaScript is definitely superior. Of course, I didn't want to say that to him because he was underage. <laughs> you can just take my word for it. You still live at home, so JavaScript is the best. <laughs> so what we ended up doing was Minecraft modding. We did it in Python for the first term, and then um, I met some guys in between terms. We got together, we figured out how to do it with JavaScript. So let me show you how this works. Server. Uh, hang on a second, I sort of do the tech support for a 10 year old kid. <laughs> so in the game, you can see the chat is going from Slack uh, into, into Minecraft. So this is a hosted server, it's running somewhere in the clouds. Oh, here's Meteor right here. So he's, uh, he's 10, he goes to Ascot State School. Um, so this is the tutorial level that we built. So one of the guys that works with us, John Dillon, he's 18, he's been playing Minecraft for a bunch of years. We get together and we create these scenarios for the kids. Now our theme here is magic, it's called Magic Craft. And what magic is, is magic is this power that, get, that comes from saying special words that enables people to do impossible things. And that's literally what computer programming is, right? By saying special words, you can create something from nothing. So if you ever play Doom, this kind of reminds me of Doom. This is the tutorial level. So this is where the kids start off in the game. So they're constrained, they can't, um, I'm about to fly. Uh, am I? No, I'm not, okay. I've got no flying ability. And play it like one of the kids do. So they run through this level here. It's kind of their intro to the world of magic craft. Um, just as a, a kind of a, a little bit of anecdotal market research, how many people here have played Minecraft before? Okay. Has anybody done Minecraft modding? Cool. Um, da -da -da -da. So we're just walking through here. There's Meteor right. Come along for the ride. Where are you at? Oops, are you in here? What are you doing? <clears throat> um, so yeah, we had these problems with kids coming and then their parents were like, no, I've never let them play Minecraft because I know they're going to waste all their time in it, but since you guys are like teaching them how to code with it, 
yeah, we're going to let them do it just today. And then they would buy a Minecraft account and then they'd have a machine that wouldn't run it or something like that. And then they'd end up crying. And the parents would be like, I brought my kid here to learn how to code and you made him cry. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the, this is the chamber here. Can you guys see that okay? Do I need to make it full screen? It's fine. It's okay? Cool. Um, so yeah, this is the chamber. Now the thing about this is it looks kind of obvious that you're going to jump around these platforms to get out. The only thing is though, ta-da, we made the platform so far away you can't jump. But only just! <laughs> so the kids are keep trying, they keep trying, and they can't do it. And um, you fall down here and you teleport back to here. So after a while they come to the conclusion that it's impossible. And we say, no, it's not. There's a spell hidden somewhere in here. And here it is. Can you guys see that? my texture pack that I'm using. Um, there it is there. Uh, no, it says Exalto. So we, um, the first time we did it, we, cause the, the, the actual API in Minecraft is written in Java. And then, so we have these kids doing their first spell. They're writing these massive method chaining things in Java. It's eight year old kids trying to copy it off the projector, you know? And then um, we were just like, dude, this is not gonna work. We need to write our own high level API. We're gonna write it obviously in JavaScript, but we're gonna write it in Latin. So we can do two things, right? Well, three things. Number one, we have a unique namespace, so there's gonna be no namespace collisions. Uh, number two, it's gonna have this kind of Harry Potter sort of feel to it. And number three, we can teach them about Latin while we're doing it. It's kind of a pet thing of mine. Yeah. Um, so what they do from here is they gotta jump out of here and then they need to jump into Visual Studio and then, no they don't, they jump into a web browser. <laughs> <laughs> this is it here. So what we did is we MVP'd it every week, right? We would show up with stuff that didn't work and then try to figure out how we were gonna deliver something that delivered value to the kids. So one week we used Ripple It. You guys seen that before, Ripple It? It's this online kind of editor that works in your browser and it's got like 16 different languages. So it's got Python 3, Ruby, JavaScript, HTML, Scheme, C Sharp, Java, Practical, a whole bunch of stuff. It's got Go, it's even got esoteric languages like LolCode, BrainF, Brain Unlambda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we had them using obviously JavaScript de facto language of the web. So yeah, uh, the way this one works is you, you run your stuff here and it gives you, you know, an output over there. So we, we, we used the online one and we did a Wizard of Oz MVP. So we had them code up their, their um, function in here and hit run. And then I went around and checked that everyone had it running and then we just enabled it on the server and then they were able to run this <laughs> stuff on there. So it was all completely Wizard of Oz type stuff. Anyway, eventually we forked this Repolit and uh, used the code from there to build our own one, which is this one. This is our Magic Craft Spellbook here. <clears throat> so, let me just pump up the volume. I'm gonna refresh this page. Um, <clears throat> it was previously running the code in the browser, so I had to maintain two versions of the API, one that runs in the browser, one that runs on the server, but then we were like, how are we gonna have some horrible restrictive licensing around this thing if we run it in the browser? We need to put it behind uh, uh, an API or something. So we, the, no, the real reason that we did it was because I had to maintain two different APIs in two different places, and they were getting out of sync, and I was like having a hard time keeping them together. So what I did is this. I built one API in JavaScript, and then I made the Minecraft plugin like a dependency injection that goes inside it, and then I made a mock plugin that is for the spellbook that also goes inside instead of Minecraft. And I use that for two things. I use it for the spellbook, and I also use it for unit testing the API. So I can run automated tests on it. Haven't figured out how to automate tests inside Minecraft yet. Okay, this is the first spell that we teach them. Not this one here. <clears throat> so the first thing is we say, we're going to use magic to do it. Where do we get our magic from? We get it from magiccraft.io. I'm gonna write a function. We're gonna call it jump. And inside that function, we are going to put that one that you just found, Exalto. And then at the end, we need to say magic dot invoke jump. Um, it worked. <clears throat> so then the next thing we did is we say, we'll put a three in here. So we teach them that, jump with the power of three. Then we teach them how to refactor it into a variable so they get a little bit of an understanding of how variables work. They probably don't understand it, right? They're just doing what we tell them to do, but just repetition over time. 
So then they run that, they get that jump with the power of three. Then we factor that out into a um, parameter so they can pass it in. And then we recently added this, we used reflection to go, um, I think it's like this. Yeah. So, <laughs> it does 3.9 because it's bounded because that's the maximum velocity that you can have. Because when I first did it, I said, okay, you're gonna put a one in there, and then I walk around and check, the first guy's put five, the next guy's put 250, <laughs> and then the next guy's put this. If you have a look on the Magic Craft YouTube channel, there's a video of me talking to him. And then you see it on the projector. I said, it clearly says one. Why have you put, and he's put that. And he says, I just want to fall from a really high place. <laughs> so luckily we did some bounds checking because it's not my first uh, rodeo with kids. <laughs> so anyway, you run that, it runs, you save it by clicking on save, it posts it via an API to somewhere where this cheesy rsync script runs and then copies it via FTP onto the, the Minecraft server where you can then run it like this. Oh, where am I? What happened? What did you do? I seem to be looking at you in Minecraft. <clears throat> now, so you come here and then you cast it like this. You go cast and then the name of the spell, the function. So we just, you know, um, text parse that grab the function there, name and then you give it a uh, parameter. Three. And this is how you get around, like that. Then anyway, one of the kids discovered that you could do this. It didn't take me very long to figure this out. Come on. Double jump. Yeah, <laughs> they figured out you could double jump, but they didn't even do that. They coded it into the actual function. They just cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste. <laughs> right here with that one. Um, I'm going to short circuit this part here so I can show you the next bit. Cut and paste is a fundamental of programming. <laughs> Sorry, what's that? Cut and paste is a fundamental of programming. I know. So done well. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Complete the tutorial level. Now you're free. So then they come to um, this is this is the uh, <clears throat> that hold around. This is this is the school. It's built out of stone because the very first one we did we got a model of Hogwarts. And the first spell we taught the kids was this one that gives them a lightning bolt um, with their wand, and then some kids immediately use it to burn the skull down. <laughs> Which made another kid cry. <laughs> it's like, don't burn down the skull! And then the parents are like, I brought my son here to learn how to code, you made him cry. You made him burn down the skull. <laughs> no, I had to go and say, excuse me sir, is this your son? And he's like, yes. And I said, well, your son just burned down the skull. <laughs> Afraid he's going to be expelled. It's gonna have to stay for detention. Um, yeah, so you can fly, it's kind of cool. Let me go to, I'll take you to the next world, MVTP flight. So this is the next scenario that we put them in. <clears throat> so here, um, how do I get rid of this thing in my hand? I'm not the expert with the Minecraft side of things. So anyway, there's this big canyon down here and they kind of fall down they can use their jump spell to move around. Now inside here, there's another spell um, which I don't even know where it's hidden, it's somewhere in here. But the spell is declaro, which means to manifest. And so we give them this spell next. This is what we teach them, magic carpet. And it doesn't take any parameters, and the function is declaro, and it takes one argument. Let's just see what happens if I run this. Oh, look at that. So we designed it so that you know as they type in the spell book it's essentially unit testing for them so you can also that's like whenever you put a function in here it will give you the usage over this side you can't see me tapping on my screen <clears throat> um, so yeah it's elytra if you've played minecraft you know that that's like a cape that allows you to fly how am i doing for time am i good just let me know when to start playing off the stage when it's time <laughs> Um, so if I run this one here, it will say, how much, sorry? 14 and a half so far. Okay, and I got 20? Okay, cool. <laughs> so here, uh, if I cast Magic Carpet, don't mind the spelling, I get um, something, somewhere. Senor, 
It's in my inventory. Okay. So in my inventory, I got this thing. I can put it on. Think. Now I got a cape, right? So what I can now do is this. When I jump, I can now fly. It's kind of gliding rather than flying. So I can fly through like this. And wee! Then I'm going to cast my jump spell to get up there. Whoops. Smash my head on exactly. Cast jump five. And I can go for the rest of the course. So we built a couple of courses with flying and stuff like that. Um, okay, so let me see if I can find someone. TP two player X media right. So this is the next spell that we taught them. Um, don't mind this meteorite. It's for a demo, and I do it in love. Okay, here we go. Da -da. Cast toss. Meteorite. <laughs> 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 so it just applies a random three dimensional vector <laughs> to him for the things you can do while he's still in the air. Um, so then, of course, what did the kids do? They, oh, okay, yeah. he's doing it to me. So then what they did is they uh, cut and paste that one. And so the server's designed so that if you go too high, it'll kick you from the server. So it became basically a DOS attack on the other players. And then we had kids cry. I want my kid here to learn to code, and you made him cry. So All then, parts lead to crying. It seems like it, yeah. So then the next week, we coded a defense spell against that. Cast um, Toss Reverse. This one uh, uses a spell hook. You want to chant it. Okay, now I say, um, meteorite. Please toss me. That's what you're doing. Oh, okay. It's not working. <laughs> <laughs> My spell is weak. <laughs> Might be because I pushed a new version of the API. Let me show you what that spell looks like, though, so you can get an idea of what we did there. Spells, spell, spell. Toss reverse. And I will paste it into here so you can see it. So we just um, we create a new object, give it a name, and then we give it a function here, which takes the target and the caster, and then it just reverses them. And then we enchant. Actually, I know why it's not working. I changed the. Um, I made that more Latin, in the new version of the API. <clears throat> anyway, so that's how that part works. Um, let me show you one more spell that I think is quite cool. Game TP to USBTP. Can I? Okay. Um, this one. <laughs> <laughs> With this one, you can burn the kids to death. <laughs> and they cry. I bet they love that. <laughs> <laughs> He's not feeling it. Okay. Anyway, I um. Yeah. Look, I fixed him. I fixed him. He's okay. He's okay. No kids were harmed in the making of this uh, demo. Um, uh, <laughs> he's going to try to make me the server. <laughs> uh, yeah, so then we, um, let's see, was the, I'll go to the jungle. MVTP, MVTP, list. MVTP arena. So this is a, a wizard battle arena for battling with wizards. I'll show you a little bit about how we did the API. So the API is written in TypeScript because we thought it's not weird enough us being on the JVM. We actually have to like take it to the next level. <laughs> so it's written in TypeScript, which gives us static type checking. This is dark magic. Dark magic, yeah. <laughs> this is from the dark side, totally. Uh, it's written in TypeScript. It runs inside Nashorn, which is um, <laughs> Corey's having a visceral reaction over here, <laughs> just looking at it. Um, it's written in TypeScript, and then it compiles down to JS, and then it runs inside the Nashorn engine, which is Oracle's uh, JavaScript engine inside the JVM. Now, where did I have to do some? I had to do some really funky stuff with it to get it to work. What was that? Uh, print. Um, I'm pretty sure 
pretty sure it was in here. It's in my print. Function print. Print. Well, there's some difference, some fundamental differences. Oh, okay, so here it is, yeah. This is it here. Wrapper for print in Nashhorn or console.log on Node.js browser. So I have to do tests in here to detect whether I'm running in Nashhorn or if I'm running inside Node.js. Because when this when this API is running as the spellbook, it's running in um, AWS Lambda inside Node.js. And then when it's running inside Minecraft, it's running inside Nashhorn. So I had to figure out ways for the plugin to be able to tell where it's running and then call appropriate functions and replace the other ones when it's not running there. So yeah, wrote it in TypeScript, compiles down to JS, runs in two environments, Node.js and Nashhorn. So yeah, well, what's coming up next for us is we, we run this at Coda Dojo every weekend. Um, Ascot State School rang me up and said, can you come and do an eight week course for the kids at, um, you know, after school? Because a bunch of the kids who come to Coda Dojo go to that school, told all their friends about it, they really loved it, they're real enthusiastic about it. And we're doing a holiday workshop. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to do a hackathon. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a whole lot of uh, scenarios you know, kind of like the, the wizard battle scenario, you know, the tutorial level where you have to jump, the canyon where you need to fly. So they're problems that the kids can, you know, grapple with, and then a spell which transforms their experience of that situation. So that they experience how, you know, mastering writing code and stuff can, can give you magical powers. So we're gonna have a hackathon for that, and uh, all the <coughs> content that we generate there will be used for the kids at Code Dojo. So, the way we think we'll do that is in the morning, it's like teams of people creating scenarios and uh, spells. And then in the afternoon, we get the kids to come and play through the scenarios. And then the kids judge the hackathon and we have prizes for everyone. So that's the plan. So if you want to be kept up to date about when that's happening, have a look at um, MagicCraft.io on Twitter. That's probably the best way to follow along. Thanks.